All right, um, I just got off the phone with Mr. Movie Phone, and he said that all that is out right now is Pirates of the Caribbean, Baywatch, and Alien Covenant. And I'm not gonna go fucking see any of those because I've seen most of them and they're garbage. So I'm gonna see what Netflix has to offer you, old boy. And oh, here we go. We got ourselves War Machine. And it looks like it's gonna be about Don Cheadle's character from Iron Man. That's pretty cool. I think it's about when he was younger, coming up in the army in the ranks, Brad Pitt's in it. Wow, this, this looks really cool. All right, let's check it out. Netflix and Cheadle. No Cheadle. You're saying there's no Cheadle. No Netflix and Cheadle. No, I didn't read the description. Welcome to room 666. Uh, the thing I said earlier about War Machine is not true. That's actually not what it's about. Uh, there is going to be no Cheadle. We are Cheadle-less, but um, hold on. Um, I got Cheadle fingers. Um, but War Machine is actually a new film from David Michaud, and it stars Brad Pitt as an army general who is sent to Afghanistan to try to end the war. And he brings along with him his own kind of band of misfits that, uh, you know, end up just going over there and partying and not really doing anything for the war. But who did anything in the Afghanistan war, huh? I don't mean to get political, but, you know, Brad Pitt couldn't help it. Who, who can help, right? All right, enough about my chode, and let's get into David Michaud, who directed the film. He's an Australian director. He directed Animal Kingdom and The Rover, which are really good movies. Both of those films showed promise, uh, but this War Machine one, um, you know, it's kind of a step back. This seems like his first film to me. And maybe it's because he can't really tackle the dark political satire that it's supposed to be. Because that's kind of the main problem with this movie is that it's really disjointed in terms of the tones. It's all over the place. Um, but, you know, he's a good director, you know. But anyway, enough about David Machode. Let's talk about my chode. Now, it's sweaty. All right, get your speedo on so we can dive headfirst into the pit. Bradley Pitt is in this film. He stars in this film. And look, I love Brad Pitt. He's a great actor. Um, he's a great character actor, but here, he's not bad. He's just a little over the top in some places. He's kind of miscast. Uh, basically, the whole time, he's just like this. Like, the whole time. We're just, just doing this. <laughs> I would say, you know, I would never, I'd never thought that I'd say that Brad Pitt is miscast and that Anthony Michael Hall and Topher Grace aren't in the movie. That's, I, I didn't think that would ever happen. But, you know, he looks good with white hair. So, you know, I think that's really all that matters. Okay, so in this fucking movie, there's Brad Pitt, as we talked about. There's John Magaro, Anthony Michael Hall. Next up on the list is Ben Kingsley, who... You know, is a good actor and has done some good stuff. I don't know if you've seen Sexy Beast. He's really good in that. Uh, but here, he's basically just doing a bad impersonation of Gandhi. Uh, mixed in with a little bit of the Mandarin and some of his character from The Love Guru thrown in there just because who gives a fuck, you know? Um, he needs to stop playing these roles. We don't need Kingsley to always play these things. He played Gandhi, so everyone thinks he's Alfred Molina. He could just play every race that there is, but he's not Alfred Molina, and he'll never be. Kingsley, kick it. Kick it, Kingsley. Kick it the fuck back. Emery Cohen, Topher Grace. Uh, Daniel Betts. RJ Seiler, he was in Power Rangers. Alan Ruck from Ferris Bueller's Day Off. We have uh, actually two of my favorite parts of this film, which I never thought I would say. Anthony Michael Hall and Topher Grace. These roles were just kind of made for them. And Anthony Michael Hall kind of plays Brad Pitt's right-hand man, and he's really angry and mad all the time, and he's pretty funny. It's a pretty funny role for Anthony Michael Hall. I wish it was a more fleshed out role. Same thing with Topher Grace. Topher Grace plays kind of this little weaselly type character. I think Topher Grace is, you know, very weasel-like, and I think that that's a great role for him. He should just continue to play weasels all the time. And, you know, he's his character's not really fleshed out either, and I wish that it was. I wish there was more time with the kind of um, band of misfits that is around Brad Pitt, because the supporting cast is actually really fun when they're around, uh, but they don't really get into it much. But Anthony Michael Hall and Topher Grace are better in a movie than Brad Pitt and Ben Kingsley. Who the fuck would have thought that? Oh my God. All right, there's a pretty big cast in this, but I'm not gonna go through every single person because you don't really spend too much time with them. Uh, Nicholas Jones, Will Poulter, 
Lakeith Stanfield, Ben Kingsley, Meg Tilly. I haven't seen her since the fucking Big Chill. But Lakeith Stanfield, for the little time that he's on screen, he is actually really good. Um, you might know him from Atlanta. He was in Get Out. He's really good in this. Uh, his character is pretty funny. Again, it's not really fleshed out, but he has maybe three or four scenes that are really strong and stand out from everything else that goes on. It's a typical kind of fun war movie for a while, and then it turns into this more serious, dramatic war movie. It just kind of jumps back and forth. It never knows what it wants to be. But with Lakeith Stanfield, it, in those scenes, there is sort of like the balance for his scenes. So, and he was actually really good in it. So I think he's good in everything he's been in so far. So, you know, Lakeith, baby. Griffin Dunn from, what was the After Hours? Josh Stewart. Scoop McNeary is in this. He narrates it. In conclusion, uh, this movie is not about Don Cheadle. There's no Cheadle, we're cheadle We've got no Cheadle at all, and it could have used some Cheadle. It could have used a lot of Cheadle. Hell, maybe if it had Cheadle, it would have been better. But you know what, look. If you saw the trailer and you're like, oh, that looks fine, check it out, okay? If you saw it and you're just like, oh, that, that I wouldn't want to see that, don't see it. I wouldn't tell you to see it because if the trailer doesn't interest you, you probably won't like it. And it's got no Don Cheadle. I thought I was going to Netflix and Cheadle today, but I guess not. Thanks, War Machine. Oh, Don Cheadle. What the world needs now is Cheadle. Sweet Cheadle. Benedict Hardy? Nobody knows who that is.